I dragged you out of your house to come over here to shoot a little quick segment here because I had some things on my mind and I wanted to get it off. Um, so I said, well, come on, Matt, what do you think? I can just tell in your voice, but you're here, you're smiling, so am, you're a pro. Yeah. All right. I'm a pro. Well, you're a pro. So what are we going to do? Now tell me. Since we... <laughs> no, no. You, you, this is this is you. This is the Phil. Let's get it all big Phil's chest. All right? Yeah, it is. It really and, is. And yeah, and just, you know, you wanted to discuss the Steelers quarterback situation and kind of add your two cents now going okay. into preseason game three, the finale of the preseason. Russell Wilson will get the start for this third preseason game on right. the road against the Lions. We don't know where or how long he will play uh, with those starters, but it is projected that him and the starters are going to take some snaps. We don't know what that will look like. And we, of course, expect Justin Fields to play as well. But go ahead, Big Phil. Air it out, man. How no, you no. Feeling? Just, well, <laughs> just a couple of things. It's yeah. talked about so much on TV. Right. And I wouldn't know this unless they tell me every single day. Did you know that Justin Fields has a different element that just – that's it. I mean, it's he's, he's got that element. Oh, I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, can't we just <laughs> – a lot of things to say about it. But I think that's what really got me going, oh, my God, let, let's let's go deeper with that element. I will say this, getting off track a little bit before yeah. we go. Three years ago or four years ago, whatever the time, the Chicago Bears – are going to draft Justin Fields. Right. And if they had a coach by the name of Greg Roman, do you think that would have changed his career? Uh, I know for a fact that it would have changed his career, yes. Uh, well, tell me why. Know, well, you know, I think we both agree that Greg Roman is one of the more underrated offensive minds in the NFL. Doesn't get enough credit for the work that he has done with quarterbacks like Colin Kaepernick, like Tyrod Taylor, like even, uh, of course, Lamar Jackson and what he built with just – a completely unique offense that fit Lamar's skill set at that time perfectly. Right. It really was ahead of the curve as far as, uh, you know, utilizing quarterback run plays and still making it physical aspect of an NFL game instead of just like the, you know, pro, pro style, read option, you know, simple college style of it. He made it fit. You know, I think yeah. when he coached Tyrod, Tyrod was an all pro, I think, right? Or made the pro bowl. Tyrod Bowler. was an all pro. Uh he was a pro bowler that year. Pro yes. bowler, yeah. Yes. So yeah, no, I think he gets he's always gotten a bad rap. Oh, well, this they're not letting Lamar throw enough. But they were slowly working their way towards that. Right. I think every year Lamar got more or, or better on hanging in the pocket, making yeah. reads, and going through the, you know, the progressions, which you hear everybody talk about, but it's real. I said, let's talk about quarterbacking real quick. I'll just say this. You got to learn to drop back, feel the pocket, what to do a little bit there. It's not always escape and run for five. And yeah. oh my God, he ran for five. Instead, let's read it out with it within the time, which I know it's quick, right. make good decisions, and then go from there. And the only way you get good at that, right, Matt, is lots and lots of reps. We're going to talk about some uh, a, a guy here at the end of all this who's I was shocked when I watched him how much he had changed. But so. That's the way you do it, you know, and Tom Brady was great moving in the pocket. Why? He had no choice. Right. He wasn't going to run. And so just like Justin Fields and Russell Wilson years ago, but not now, they had two choices. I can either stand in and read it and throw to the open guy or just escape because it's getting a little muddy. And I, I, I just this is not what I do. Right. And I guess my whole point is here in Pittsburgh, a couple that before I start saying who I think should start, why, and all the other things, is that they both have to be better at processing, finding the guy, throwing in rhythm, take the strain off the offensive line, throw the ball away, quit trying to scramble, then you take a sack and other troubles come too. But when you do scramble, be careful, get your yards, whatever. That's all good. But first you got to learn to do the processing of the play and do it better. Because right. I don't think either one of them done it, has done it well enough in the preseason for all of us to go, that's the guy. Right. So right. what do you think? No, I would agree with that. I think both of them, you know, really have uh, have shown their their deficiencies really as far as adjusting to this new scheme that Ar Arthur Smith has brought to the table. And I think that's part of it too. It is the preseason. There isn't a, a huge emphasis on game plan specific plays 
right? And thoughts that go into what plays into Russell Wilson favorably, what plays into Justin Fields game favorably. So we do see that lack or that disconnect, I feel like a little bit as far as what we'll hopefully see executed at a higher level during the regular season. You know, but I go back to what you were saying earlier, though. You know, so Russell, yeah, he's had to adjust his game. Fortunately, too, we kind of saw a little bit of that a year ago with Sean Payton. We didn't see it to maybe the extent that we were expecting, but we did see him at least make the attempt to improve in that category of just being a better pocket passer. Right. Is it possible for Justin Fields, though, you know, to continue to develop that skill set, knowing that he is, you know, a fantastic athlete and and has gotten away with uh, passing up easy completions and scrambling and making plays and playing backyard football. A couple of things, you know, first off, when you look at this game, Pittsburgh's going to Detroit to play the lions. I don't think the lions will play anybody. Right. Uh, they didn't in the first game I did when they were playing the giants. I mean, it was zero starters. Yeah. Probably going to do that again. And Arthur Smith, I know these coaches don't care. And they'll say all that, but still you hear it. The, he is getting crushed because of what they've done these first two games. Like, oh, he's the coordinator. They're going to come right out and score 40 a game because he's there. But, yeah, he fits their franchise, what they love to do. But I would say this, Russell Wilson starting, I will be shocked if he doesn't have game plan plays in there for Russell Wilson and Justin Fields maybe too to play this game against Detroit because they're going to make them look good make people think we are a better offense than we're showing in preseason and quit trying to hide everything. It's, it's, it's not like you're hiding it in the the first game. They're going to go, we've never seen that play in our life. Of course they, what are they going to do in the NFL that hasn't been done already? So, and and I hope you think about that, the whole thought process of Russell. Stop hitting your mic. I mean, geez, you got got three feet, you got three feet of space there and you just look at how handsy you are. All right. Come on. Shut your, Hey, as I would say, shut your ass up. Okay, I don't know why you have to add that twang to it when you say that, but it's well, okay. It's just, All right, yeah, better. that's that's your your Kentucky in you right yes, there. Yes, it's, it's something. I don't know what it is, but go you ahead. You know, I guess the one thing that that plays into the favor of the Pittsburgh Steelers, right, is the fact that they are going to be going against typically the twos and the threes for the Detroit yes. Lions, since we don't see them projected to have their starters out there. So that plays into the hands of Russell Wilson, the offensive line, and just you know playing a little bit more efficiently, knowing that they're not going against you know, the, the, the starters for the Detroit lions Um, at at this point though, too, you know, I don't know really what we're going to see in this final preseason game that all of a sudden just makes me feel all that better about the quarterback situation. Um, I I know that Tomlin has said that uh, according to him in, in quotes, Russell's in the pole position, right. right, As the starting quarterback. And, And I think too, just, you know, doesn't really, I don't think, matter what happens here in preseason three. I still think the best thing for the Steelers is to go ahead and have Russell Wilson just be named the starter now okay. and just get it done and move on. And, you know, I think just take pressure off of the entire group and, and really just focus on, all right, now what can I do to develop what Russell does well? What can I do to slowly integrate all the aspects and the things that we can do athletically with Justin Fields if we – have packages in for for week one to start the season or to build throughout the year when we, you know, maybe make that move if it's possible, if it happens that way. Okay. Well, we both agree. I think it would be Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson being the starting quarterback, unless his play in Detroit is just awful, which right. I just can't believe it will be because I think he understands where he's at, what he has to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, to the other thing, just about Justin Fields, it's one of those things when you're in practice, no matter what happens, the coaching staff, which I've heard coaches do this, and I've seen it myself with coaches I've had, they will tell quarterbacks, stand in there, make a decision and throw the ball. Right. Don't scramble. We don't learn to do this. And you yeah. have to. And, and look, it's, so, yeah, Justin Fields does it sometimes. I'm not saying that, but he doesn't do it enough. Right. He makes the is. As I always say, I hear it a lot now. It's really interesting. We talk about you got to make all the routine throws. Yeah, you got to do that when it's laid out there and it's easy for you. You just can't miss. And um, it it just looks too hard sometimes to me when Justin Fields is in the drop back game, his decision making and throwing. It's, it's, but that's, you know, look, he's high pick in the NFL draft. 
and a lot of it because he has a strong arm. He's an incredible athlete who can run. Right. But you got to kind of blend it together. Lamar Jackson has done a tremendous job of that. Do you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, I mean, uh, my question for you, too, is do you think Arthur Smith, we haven't seen this in his past, right? Where when we discuss Greg Roman, you know, we saw Greg Roman kind of find ways, not kind of, he found ways to win and be successful, really, no matter who his quarterback was, whether he was with, you know, Andrew Luck and Harbaugh at Stanford and running three tight end sets and all that kind of stuff, whether it was Alex Smith, whether it was Colin Kaepernick, Tyrod Taylor, you know, and, and who was a fantastic pocket passer and a great yes. deep ball thrower. And he really mm -hmm. did a great job of utilizing what he did well in that game and, and mixing a little bit of, you know, some of the things that he did athletically throwing on the run as well. You know, do we do we have enough of a resume of Arthur Smith, though, to believe that he can build that same package or something similar to that for Justin Fields if he is, you know, potentially named the starter? I think without question he can. Just watching the Atlanta Falcons the last couple of years, yeah. the opportunities were there every single week for those guys, the quarterbacks. Right. They just didn't do – they weren't good enough or uh, in a high percentage of the time, but doing the right thing, making the throw. I mean, they, the guys who would be open in Atlanta some games, they would throw it to them, but they would miss. Right. And, you know, it was – so – I yeah, know I mean, he that's has the passion. problem, though, too, though, you know, is that like Justin Fields hasn't been known to be a knock him dead thrower, you know, in his career so far. So that's where I'm kind of like, you know, where where did the Steelers go with the direction okay. of that offense? You know, is it a right. lot of gadget plays and then heavy quarterback run? You know, I, no. I, that's that's where I'm like kind of curious no. to see like how they develop it and build it out. No, it, it's it, it's going to come into I think it's going to uh, come to fruition where we start, we start to really see what Arthur Smith is about. Hey, look, I saw him do it in Tennessee. Yeah. I saw him do it in Atlanta. I saw the receivers get open. I saw all the, you know, the whatever you want to say, the things that a lot of teams in the NFL do. I saw that in his passing games. So I have no doubt about that. He's just got to get the quarterbacks to be more determined, more disciplined. And all this is about this. We're just voicing our opinion. Again, yeah. I'm going to just end it right here. I think – Russell Wilson will be the starter because they see him as a short-term answer. Right. And I see Justin Fields as a backup. And, yes, they will have the quarterback runs in there when his time comes. Mm -hmm. But but I think they also see Justin Fields as the long-term answer. Okay. So if you start him and got to pull him early because it's you know just not going well at all, then there goes your long-term quarterback maybe. Right. So I think they'll play it safe. I think it'll be Russell Wilson. We could see some Justin Fields a little here and there. I think they'll even be careful with that too, oh, they because will. Okay. don't you? I mean, if you yeah, bring I him mean, in there and do certain things, and it's just special for him, then everybody's going, "Well, keep him in there all the time. We want to see more of that." Well, maybe there's not more of it. There's only a yeah. Well, I mean, that's the good thing about Mike Tomlin too. He's not exactly one that I think is uh, uh, acts in a reactionary state that's trying to please people, right, and please people outside the building. I mean, he's one of the better ones I think in the NFL. To right. really just say that I believe in this and this is what we're going to do. He does it as good as anybody. So that's where if Justin Fields helps you win, you know, week one versus the Atlanta Falcons with having a good red zone, you know, group of plays where he's running or RPOs or sprint outs or whatever, you know, then, yeah, you got to do it. You can't pass up on those situations. Hey, last thing I'll say. Yeah. Can you can you change? From what we see with certain quarterbacks, where they turn into other ones, and in other words, being more patient in the pocket, doing all that, making the reads, going through it, and just understanding. And the only yeah. way you got to stand in there and do it and learn and progress that way. But we talked about it earlier this week, and I just got to bring it up again. Malik Willis would right. run if he saw even a hint of a running lane, or I thought somebody was going to come and get me, and he was off to the races. And it was great preseason football for me to watch. Go, damn, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. But they're doing nothing in the pass game. And watching him, the two games in preseason, mm -hmm. I told you I had to like check. Is he is that his number? Is that him? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. Yeah. He was reading across, doing making some really special reads. And of course, he has a strong arm and his motion looked good. And you know why? Because they trained his rear end the whole offseason. If you want to play in Callahan's offense and what they do, 
He's not. He's teaching a Joe Burrow offense. I'm sure. Right. Right. And if you want to be part of this, you got to change. We want it done this way, this way. Joe Burrow scrambles. You can too. But he does the dirty work first before he knows there's nothing there before he takes off. Yeah. Well, so I mean, I think you, yeah. you know part of that too is at least for Malik. Uh, you know, projected as a first rounder. A lot of people thought that uh, yeah. he was he was a a lottery type pick type of talent right, with his skill set. And what I think has really actually helped him a little bit is, you know, it didn't go well early. And, you know, we kind of made that judgment on him really quickly. And he fell, he fell kind of behind the curtain a little bit as far as like, all right, no one really was worried or concerned about it or putting on that pressure for him to be successful because we already kind of moved on and moved forward. And yeah. I think that really has, you know, helped this young man where like, all right, there's no pressure anymore. You know, I haven't lived up to the expectations at, at the moment. And the good thing is, is that I have a new head coach and a new coaching staff and a great offensive minded coaching staff that I think now is really instilling that natural belief back into him. And now he's playing free and a little bit more comfortable. Whereas with Justin Fields, you know, because we have put so much on the shoulders of this young man, I think it's very difficult to say like, yeah, he's just he's just really focused on the the small nuances and building like yeah, he, he, you can't, you can't say that he's not thinking a little bit about just like living up to the expectations that we've put oh, on him. Sure. It's tough. So, yes. you know, I think that's a real thing. And also too, like, I just, you know, like Callahan, the Callahan's in general, Callahan auto offense, you know, I just believe in them. I just think they know how to coach it up really well. Oh, um, they do. You know, yes. I mean, if there's anyone that could sell a million brake pads, it's them. So, <laughs> um, you know, I, uh, I just, that I might be over just, everybody's head there, Matt. That oh might man, be. I mean, come on. If you have ever seen Tommy Boy, I mean, what are yeah. you doing, man? You know, That's it. Tommy okay. just sold half a million brake pads. But um, <laughs> uh, I do, oh. I do really believe in them offensively, though, as far I as just too. like being able to coach it up, right? All the experience that they had to making it easy on the quarterback too with the running game that they have, right? Which has always been something that his father has done extremely well. You know, and, and that's really, I think, the biggest question mark for me. I was really optimistic about Arthur Smith and, and the Steelers to kind of find that magic really quickly. It hasn't looked that way so far. Uh, and, and I understand what you're saying, too. The Falcons, like, they had people open. They weren't hitting them. But, like, that's a little bit of what's been Justin Fields' issue in his career so far is that he hasn't made the routine plays enough even when it is there. And I just yeah. don't know how quickly that can change for him, you know, uh, in preseason week three in the month of September, you know, so well, it's like, that's why I'm not rushing the young man to play now. And I'd yeah. rather just let Russell go out there, let Russ cook and do his thing, formulate a way to win 21 to 14, you know, as many times as possible and just get it done that way. Yeah. Well, well said. You know, if you want to get better at something, you got to practice it. Yeah. You got to really, it's got to be real in practice. And then you apply it to the games. Right. Like I said, boy, I can't, I'm hopefully I'll be able to get this game on TV. I don't want to watch a replay of it <laughs> yeah. because I just want to see everything we've talked about, see if it comes through. And, uh, you know, I feel better now. All right. <laughs> I got it off my chest. We got Good. a little off my chest. I got a lot of Good. other things I'd like to do, but, but that's I right. do. This is great. I do like though what you were saying though, and like having having almost sections within your practice saying, "Okay, you you are not allowed." As soon as you start to scramble, the play's over. Sack done. You know, and, yeah. and really just continue to build that connection with seeing the field, going through the read properly. All right, next play, do it again. You know, and and that's really I think the task for for Arthur Smith is, yeah, can you find the five or six concepts that you know. Both of your quarterbacks really feel super comfortable with and then just run them a million different ways for your offense to be successful. And that and that's really what he he's being asked to do, I think, with these two quarterbacks, given the situation. You know what? Last thing, you can't win in the NFL unless you can throw the ball pretty well. Yeah. You know, I know, run the ball, do this, do – no, that's all great. But when it comes down to it, you got to make the good – good throws on the big, whatever. The play's going to be presented to you. You only get so many opportunities a game to make plays down the field and do yeah. what we're talking about. you got to take advantage of them. You can't be leaving the pocket early. Hey, just you just can't. you got to hang in there and hit the play that really counts. So right. good job, Matt Sims. Thanks for coming over and doing this today.
Hey, thanks, Phil Sims. You're the best. You're, yeah, you're welcome. All yeah, I right. appreciate it. Now go iron yeah. that t-shirt player. All right. Oh, okay. But no, uh, hey, cool. Sims complete. That's all we got. Find us on the Believe Network. Available where podcasts are available. Follow Phil Sims on Twitter, on Instagram at Phil Sims QB11. And follow me at Sims Complete, Instagram yep. and Twitter. And we'll be back with more action, I guess, after week three of the preseason with uh, some of this quarterback talk. We'll see you all next right. time. See ya.